Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. Fantastic to have you here. On yesterday's episode, you saw me shim the gib here on the y-axis of my Bridgeport mill, and that got down the play that we had in the table, which is obviously very bad. It means we can't use the thing properly. It doesn't have the accuracy that we ideally wanted to have, but we've got that sorted, which means that now we're starting to get closer to the only thing being to blame for my poor milling, being me, the operator. But there is another issue with this. As I described yesterday, at one point in time, I accidentally ran the table into the dovetails. I'm an idiot, I know. And I broke the carrier for the lead screw nut, which means that the split lead screw can't get tightened to adjust the amount of backlash here in the X axis. It means there's a lot of backlash. It means that, you know, I can move the table like a full quarter inch to half an inch almost. Not good. And so today, oh no, that's not good. Ugh. And so today, I'm gonna take this table off of the mill, hopefully not do too much damage. So, I've cleaned off the table here, got some acetone, cleaned it all off, wiped it off, got as many of the chips out as possible because as I'm taking this apart, I don't want chips to be falling around everywhere. Um, what I've now done is I have unscrewed all the mounting bolts for the DRO scale here at the back. And what we should now be able to do, there we go, we should be able to lift it off. I made a stupid mistake though. I forgot to remove the little bracket that holds the wire and I dropped my Allen key. So I'm gonna unscrew this. Do -do 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 -do. And this DRO scale, there we go, should lift clean. And look at how nice and messy and ugly that is. Ugh. Right, let's see how badly we can damage it. First things first, I'm, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this. There are chips in there, so I'm gonna take some acetone, we're gonna rub it all down, give it a clean. Right there is some serious gunk buildup. Right, so I got the DRO to one side. Hopefully we're not gonna drop it and break it. Don't have to disconnect all the cables. What we now need to do is we need to move the mill. I've got this thing really nicely tucked away as back, as far back in the corner as possible to make use of the space. You know, it's just enough for the table to go both ways, but it's not enough for us to actually pull the table off. What I think I'm going to do is I think I'm gonna bring this around before I crowbar this. I'm just gonna give it a little chalk mark because I like where it is. I am going to basically just try and like twist this around that way so we're a little bit a little bit more into that corner then the table can hopefully come off freely. I'm gonna take my crowbar, lift her up, and give her a shuffle. There we go, that'll work. Right, so now I believe I have to remove these handles. Now let's see about getting this off. So this is the power drive unit. And uh, when I bought this mill, the drive unit it had on it didn't work, so I just got another one and I got a guy to install it. Looks like he siliconed it when he put it in, so I don't know if I'm gonna have to break it off or something, but uh, let's pull these screws out. There's another little key there that probably doesn't want to be there. So, so let's see, does this just slide off of that? Yeah. Oh boy. Pull these screws out, see if that helps. Ah! Is that good or bad? I don't know. <laughs> well, it took a bearing apart. <laughs> Maybe that's not good. <laughs> yeah, damn silicon. Come on. Nice. So I just pulled this off here, and it looks like I could have just unscrewed these set screws and then pulled the whole assembly off at the same time instead of having to slide it off the shaft there. So top tip you can just pull that off. So the handle on this side is now off and this can get unscrewed. To pull that lead screw out, we have to do the same thing over here. Take all this stuff off. Thankfully, there's no, uh, there's no drive, so it's a little easier. Hey, it's coming now. If in doubt, use a screwdriver as a pry bar, am I right? Mmm, looks lovely. This is the, uh, that's the amount of backlash there is in the screw. <laughs> right, so now at this stage, that table moves freely, and we can install the handle for convenience. We can pull this thing off of there. All right, so I'm having <sighs> that handle slipping, so I'm just gonna put this back together. There we go, and now I can undo it. <laughs> Theoretically, this, ah, 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 look at that! <laughs> There's a lead screw. Yummy. Let's degrease this bad boy. 
and I am then gonna now give it a really, really thorough clean. Oh wow, this actually doesn't look in too bad condition. It looks pretty good to me. Have a look at that. Now I'm no expert, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I would say that that screw is in really good condition. Over here, it's obviously hardly been used and it really doesn't look dissimilar to the middle where this is getting its most use on the nuts inside there. So you remember yesterday here on that Y axis, I took out that Gibbs screw and we shimmed the Gibbs screw because there was a lot of play in it. The Gibbs screw here seems pretty good, but you'll remember when we took that Gibbs screw out, all of a sudden we get loads of slop in the table, which is exactly what I want right now because I'm gonna take this table off and I'm gonna want it to be nice and easy to come off and then easier to put back afterwards. So I'm gonna loosen the uh, the gib screw and the gib should now, there we go, come right out of the dovetail. There we go, this is dirty so I'm gonna give that a really thorough clean. And this is why it's important to do this stuff. And I really wish I'd done it sooner because here you can see the grooves and the hole that allows oil to get in here so that the ways can get lubricated. It's really important these are clear to allow the oil to flow. And of course the oil can gunk up and just like this clog up the oil passageway completely, which means that the oiler can't push oil through to it. No bueno. No bueno indido. There we go, I've given it a little clean there. And after the degreasing, it really looks like it's in a lot better condition than the one in the Y axis, which we had to shim by about eight thousandths of an inch, which is obviously quite a lot. This one is good, it is tight. We don't have to do anything to it, we don't have to shim it. So now, this table is super loose, and you know, I can even lift it up like that, right? I shouldn't do that, that'll damage it. <laughs> and so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of my tool cards here. <laughs> oh, the things you learn on the internet. I tell you, there are some amazing forums online. Any question you have about machining, you throw it into Google, somebody has answered it. This tool cart idea is utter genius. I'm gonna lower the table until these dovetails are just about level with the tool cart. I got some rubber there, hopefully protect it a little bit. There we go. And so now we should single-handedly be able to pull this off. Bazinga! Who says bazinga? Nobody says bazinga. Would you look at that? We've got it off of there. And I can now get this all the way out of the way. <laughs> Doesn't the mill look in a sorry state now? So now, you know, I'm just gonna clean this all up. We're gonna degrease it, then we'll look at the problem. So before we get on to the main problem that's over here, another bigger issue here. And you see, it would've been a good idea when I bought this mill to take it completely apart like this. But I had no clue what I'm doing. I still have no idea what it is that I'm doing, fair warning. And this is clearly just bad. You know, this amount of gunk in here, holy moly, that's no good. So it means that every time that I've pressurized the oil here on the machine and tried to pump oil into it, nothing has happened up here. Thank goodness I did keep up, you know, throwing oil in from the underneath. I'd oil up the ways, I'd oil up the uh, these surfaces from the underneath. So at least some oil was getting there, but certainly not as much as there should have been. Oh my goodness, that's terrible. It looks like they've been putting, I don't know if it's grease, it might be grease, or vegetable oil. Oh wow, look at that, that was all in that hole. I wonder how clogged the lines are themselves. Okay, I think I'll be able to service this pretty well. It looks like all the lines just pull out, so I'll be able to flush them, flush them through. And all the holes on this side are also completely clogged. So I'm gonna need to spend some time on that. Okay, so I've got a really big issue here. All of these oil lines are completely clogged. As much as I pump that, I'm not getting any oil to flow whatsoever. All these holes were completely clogged. All these lines are clogged. Frankly, I probably just need to somehow go through this whole thing um, and somehow push out all the, all the crud. And that's gonna take some time. I'm cognizant of the fact that if I order something any later than pretty soon, it won't arrive, and so I want to know if I have to order a part to, to fix this. So this is the assembly that holds in the nuts here, and this is what broke. It is this screw that tightens and tensions the nuts. You see, when I jammed that table, I broke the casting, and therefore we just basically messed it up big time. It's a problem, and I think I might end up getting away with drilling and tapping and, uh, I don't know. Let's unscrew this. I need to see if I can get this screw out of there. Ugh. Damn it. So it won't unscrew. Wonder if I can hammer on the thing enough that we can get the screw loose and un undo it. Well, it's certainly much looser now. Oh, come on. Okay, this is a problem. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
There we go. Man, that was difficult. So this screw is bent. Let's give these a push. These are the nuts. Now, this probably came with nuts that were together, but feeling this, they feel like they're split. So somebody must have done the split nut modification. That sounds pretty painful. But basically what you can do is you can split the nuts and it looks like it's already been done. There goes one. And there's the next nut. So it looks like it was factory split nuts. It's got a nice chamfer on it, unless somebody just did a good job. So let's have a look at this. I have five minutes to get new parts on the next day delivery. I want to see if I can avoid that and if we can make it work without needing to get new parts because all it looks like is the casting fell out. This could work. Oh my goodness, these threads are worn to hell and back. Yeah, this is. these are super badly worn. One of these looks significantly less worn than the other. This one is just torn to hell and back. This one is a little bit better. Oh, no, anyway, the only issue is, is we broke the casting and dented this. Right. You know what I reckon I'm gonna do? I reckon since I've got this thing torn apart, I'm gonna get a new casting. I'm gonna order that and that should show up pretty soon. I'm also gonna get new nuts. So since to get this, uh, this thing out that I'm gonna reorder, I also have to pull this off. It gives me an opportunity to look at these threads. So I'll pull this plate off. I can now wind this out, and this is a left-hand thread, so I've got to turn clockwise to get it to come out. That way it feels natural, I guess, when you move the table around. Uh-oh. Screw looks in good shape. Now we'll pull this out of there. So I just quickly placed an order for some new parts. Hopefully they'll arrive tomorrow. Come on! There we go. Pull these screws out. These hoses just pop out. Come on. There we go. Yes. Hey, hey, look at that. Screws look in much, the nuts look in much better shape on this side, which is good because I didn't under, I didn't, I didn't order those nuts. So there we go. That's out of there. I want to show you something pretty funny there. Look at all of those chips that are down there and the previous users of this machine. I have already pulled out massive bundles of them from under here. Look at that mess that was in there. Ah, ah. It's probably not that sensible. I probably should have put something on my sleeves. Oh, tweezers. I really should have covered myself up. Okay, so I got the parts ordered. That I've cleaned out the knee there, which was just disgusting. And I believe the sensible thing to do at this stage, since I've got it this far apart, is for me to take this knee assembly off. Take this off and unclog all the oil holes that are meant to feed oil down to it. For that, I've got to take off these electrical bits. And there's also some oil stuff I need to take off on the other side. Right, so I was easily able to slide this off, and you notice I pulled the gib out of the table, which felt a little weird considering I put it back in there only yesterday. But I pulled the gib out, that means that this is, comes out um, a lot easier. It did, only weighs about kind of 40 pounds or so, so it was, uh, didn't require me uh, lifting it onto a cart. The whole reason that I wanted to do this is I figured that on the back side here, all these oil holes would be clogged up. They actually don't look too bad, but I'm gonna be able to clean it up. There's plenty of junk that needs to be cleaned. And so basically I'm gonna work on cleaning this all up, cleaning out all the oil things. And I might even blow some air through these oil hoses here, see if we can unclog them. Okay, so quick update. I've cleared out all the oil passageways in the actual saddle itself. Then I've been taking some degreaser and I've been putting it in this and it has worked marvelously along with compressed air to free up one, two, three, four, five of the eight passageways there are. And so basically what I'm doing is I'm every so often I'm periodically coming in here, filling this up with a degreaser and then coming in here with the air gun and making a mess and blowing it through and it's done really just quite a marvelous job. And so there's naturally a little bit, pretty decent amount of time I have to wait between each fill. And so I've come over to the knee of the mill here and I have done a lot of cleaning up. It was messy in here. All of that has come out of it and I took a big bunch out a few weeks ago, as I said. It is so much cleaner than it was. These gears here are what this crank turns. And that in turn turns a screw down there to raise and lower the knee of the mill. Now this needs some grease, so I'm gonna put some grease in there. And this, obviously, there is oil that flows down into there. I've also cleared out this line here 
and I then wanted to give this thing a go and just see if oil dribbled out. Trouble is, hardly any oil. When I pump this thing, hardly any oil comes out. So I'm a little concerned that I might need to uh, take this whole assembly apart and unclog it. Another issue is I bumped this. This is the uh, this is the glass scale for the DRO. I bumped it, and so I really think I might have uh, I might have done some serious damage. If I gently move it, it still works up there on the DRO, but uh, I might have broken that. I might have to replace some scales. Before you ask, no, I have no idea how to correctly grease something. I'm just gonna throw some grease on it. I presume the whole point of grease is that you just throw a lot on it. Then maybe just spin the handle. Hey, hey would you look at that? Self-greasing. The auto greaser. The auto greaser 3000. I have head butted this at least 20 times in the past hour. Anyway, I am, I just pulled that copper out of there and I'm just gonna fill this up with oil just so it'll uh, slowly dribble down there before we get this thing fixed. I also keep splitting those latex gloves. We'll see if these are any better. Okay, so I've spent a lot of time here cleaning this up, getting it all looking a hell of a lot nicer. I've put a lot of degreasant on it, and of course, I spent a lot of time trying to blow out the lines, and there were two blocked ones that, sadly, are now the most open lines, which I think is a problem. So what I did is I couldn't get anything to flow through this one, this one, and this one there. So I drilled out the nut that screws in here. But of course, only afterwards did I realize that's probably designed to give resistance so that it requires a lot of pressure to flow because I was getting the trickling through of the degreaser that I was pumping through the lines in all of them. But of course, now that I've opened up those two, when I pump through the degreaser and then subsequently, for example, now if I pump through the oil, of course, we're getting a lot of oil flow through these two tubes, and we're getting much less, significantly less oil flow through the others. We are getting some, but of course the oil is going to find the path of least resistance. It's going to be those two. So these are going to be over-oiled. Not that that's a problem, but that until I sort that out, I still do have to be cognizant that this is not going to be oiling the way it should, so I'll have to keep it oiled myself. I've also just ordered another uh, another oiler, because this thing, I'm, I'm just seeing no oil pumping, so got to get another one. Took it apart, couldn't get it to work. So I've now oiled everything up these ways. I've cleaned them as much as possible with some paper towels. I have reinstalled these sliding uh, watchamadoodahs. That's 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 the name, trust me, promise. I've also given the saddle a real royal clean. <coughs> and a really good oiling. And now it's time to reinstall it. Slide it back on, that was easy, look at that. I'm even take my chip cover here and set that up there. So as you might have noticed, I conveniently was cleaning that saddle on top of something that I also need to clean. Now we can. I'm gonna give the table a really, really good and thorough clean. I'm gonna stone it a little bit. We're just gonna kind of pretty it up a little bit and then we're gonna flip it over and we're just gonna degrease clean all the ways in the underneath as well. Right, so I've got this stuff covered up for the night. We're gonna call it there for a day. But I think the first thing I'm gonna do tomorrow is I'm gonna take this back off and I'm just gonna drill out all of those little, uh, all of these little watch my watsits. I drilled out those first two and obviously the flow is way more here. I'm gonna drill all these out and then clean out the lines properly again. So basically all that cleaning and oiling I did here is for nothing, but not really because I just wanna make sure that oil is flying through everything evenly so we can get as much oil through that thing once it's running. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe because I wanna keep sharing the joy that I'm having doing these projects, learning about these things. And the one little thing I'd say to anybody that has a bridge port or any mill or any piece of equipment is taking it apart is one, a lot of fun too. It's a little bit easier than I first just why well, I haven't put it back together yet. So maybe it's easier, maybe it's not. But I have learned so much going through this machine, seeing how it works, and I think it's really going to influence how it is that I end up using the thing. It makes me feel a lot more confident now I know how to take it apart. I haven't put it back together yet. But anyway, it's a lot of fun. Take apart your machines, clean them out, get them uh, get them uh, shiny and looking neat and, uh, and running true. Make sure all that oil is flowing. Basically what I'm saying is, is even if you're a complete novice like me, taking apart your mill, not so difficult. It means you can keep it clean and you're gonna have a lot of fun doing it. Make sure you guys go get out and make stuff, clean out your old machines. Ton of fun and I'm gonna see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.